Hello, I'm Raziel, and, well, last week I spoke about my least favourite retcon within 40k. And that, of course, is the reincarnation or the undying, undeath, of Eldrad Ultron. And some people put in some very good comments about what they thought was theirs, and, you know, Ed had actually had a nice conversation down below. So, I thought this week, I'm going to do my favourite retcon, the one I think works so well and fits brilliantly, and... It's good, and not one that's just a retcon, one that not many people actually even know it's a retcon because of how well it works, and that is the Alpha Legion. Now, the Alpha Legion is a fantastic legion now. They are very sneaky, they're full of espionage, and, well, everyone's Alpharius. Fantastic, right? Good. And, of course, you now have the two Primarchs, which is something else to be added later. However, originally, back in the bygone days, there was the one Primarch and Alpha Legion. Alpha Legion were brutal, savage, incredibly warlike. They were so violent, Night Lords would take notes and the World Eaters would tell them to chill out. Yeah, we're talking savagery on a whole new level. Yeah, they were con actually, in some sources, it literally considers them to be the most violent Legion. Which is, te which is saying something when you're putting them right next to the World Eaters. And reason for this? Well, it's overachievement. It's overstretching. It's trying to be the best when you were already last. The Alpha Legion, of course, were the final Legion. They were the last one to be discovered. And, of course, Alpharius was the last Primarch to be discovered. So, they wanted to prove they were the best by trying to catch up. And they were trying to catch up by being overly violent. And, yes... That was the Alpha Legion for you. Now, what made this kind of bad is back then, I know people are not going to like this comment, but most of the Chaos Traitors and Chaos Space Marine Legions, or chapters back then, were much of a muchness. They were all different versions of Black Legion, just painted different, except the main four. You know, Death Guard, Corn, uh, World Eaters, Emperor's Children, and Father and Sons. They were the only ones that were actually different, obviously, because they worshipped a specific god. And the other, got, the other tra traders were basically Chaos Undivided. And that was their trait. They were Chaos Undivided. The only special one, real, only special characters... No, the only special one was basically Abaddon. He was the only one that was that much different. Because he was favoured by all four gods. So he had bits, gifts and powers that sort of did, um, showed him off. So, every traitor legion was the same. Except they were just painted differently. And it obviously, it wasn't until about 9th, 8th edition when we actually got to use Legion traits. Where we could actually play Alpha Legion, Iron Warriors and whatnot on the board as they are. Now the problem with this is that it's literally 9 years after Legion came out when the whole retcon started. And you know Alpha Legion became their sneaky selves. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I think this retcon is absolutely fantastic because it actually made... Because it wasn't just the Alpha Legion that got retcon. Well, specifically they were the biggest ones but every traitor legion got retconned here because every tra traitor legion went from being you know care uh, space wings but evil to having their own idiosyncrasies and their own little traits and per uh, traits and personalities and odd quirks which again it adds so much to the lore but we're focusing on alpha legion and also to remember back hit then as well Dark Angels, Black Templars, Space Wolves, Blood Angels all had their own codices as well. The 5th edition Space Wolves Codex is one of my favourites. I've done many videos on that book alone. I've never read the Blood Angels one or the Dark Angels one. Uh, Black Templars one is not too bad. And of course Grey Knights had their own as well. But, so, Chaos Space Marines did not. Chaos Space Marines were Chaos Space Marines. And you just had to choose your colour scheme. So along comes Dan Abnett and he writes Legion. Legion is released and we see this new type of traitor, this uh, new type of space marine. This is a new type of space marine we've not really even seen before properly. Where Raven got a full of stealth, you know, doing those sort of attacks like the Night Lords, but unlike the Night Lords actually leaving the skins on their enemies, uh, Alpha Legion were more like misinformation. They were disruptive. They would do things that would destroy the enemy without even having to unsheathe their blade. Fantastic. This stuff's just brilliant and it added this whole new level to the space means. And something we actually haven't really seen since either. We've not seen this form of 
disruptive warfare in 40k. We, uh, you know, this espionage is something that's very rare and something we don't really see outside of the Officio Assassinorum. Again, something that 40k really does need, in my opinion. I do like a good spy novel. As I was saying, so Alpha Legion's change added so much more. Rather than going from, like I said, a basic brutish, never just violent chapter to a chapter which was fought for, it kind of leaves a lot of open questions as well. If you go back to this, the uh, one of the newer books, that, you know, they, uh, the Imperium actually let Alpha Legion onto their ship because, quote unquote, there were no Alpha Legion on the planet. So, yeah, this is good. And I think this has been a good change for 40k, and it's a good change for the Alpha Legion to go from that. So, what would you say was a good one? Now, to finally finish this off, uh, I do want to talk about some of the other traitor legions, like the Iron Warriors and the Night Lords, okay? Now, the thing is about these two in particular, they were counter to Loyalists. Alpha Legion, I can't really see when they're actually a counter to. We have Iron Warriors are a counter to the Imperial Fist, you know, Imperial Fists are good at fortification, and Iron Warriors are good at sieging. Uh, Night Lords are good at stealth to spread fear, and Raven Guard are good at stealth to, you know, to attack enemy enemies quickly and without much bloodshed on return. However, the Alpha Legion do not have a counter. They don't have anyone that's, you know, the exact opposite. Though I'm trying to work out what the exact opposite of it. You know, a propaganda spreading machine. Well, you could say the word bear is at that one. But yeah, they still don't work. They're not. They don't spread propaganda. They spread zeal. So there you go. So they went from this overachieving, violent chapter, trying to be the best, come from coming from final position. You know, like they were the ones that stalled on the start line and now suddenly want to be number one, even though you know everyone else has finished the race. So they're going to do their best to achieve number one. And I just think this is great. I just think this is one of the best retcons. Games Workshop I've ever done to 40k. I might do some more of the retcons I've noticed and my what I think about them, but this is my favorite. Outrider Wolf One is my least favorite because it took this at, because it takes away from 40k. It takes away a lot of story and you know a lot of the themes of it. However, this adds more. This adds more to 40k. It's actually what a retcon should do. A retcon should add to the story. When you change something, it should add something. It shouldn't just take anything away. Yeah, it technically just took away another brutish, violent legion, but it replaced it with a better version of that legion, a thoughtful legion, a legion that went out of its way to disrupt, and not one that would just bombard a planet and to destroy it. And just to continue, there was uh, what I was thinking about saying, like, there was a nine-year gap between the actual rules being implicated, and even some of the old codices still have this. I think the eighth edition codex still applies that, you know. Alpha Legion were a violent legion. Now, for a start, I've got before I go about Eighth Edition being because that is nine years after the Fifth Edition one kind of came out at the same time as Legion, so I don't think there's much crossover. There wasn't much crossover with knowledge of what Dan Dan was doing on release, and then I probably what I probably reckon happened was like he released Legion, they read it, and went, oh dear, our codex is out in a couple of months. What are we gonna do? And they just left it as it was. They added a little bit in there about their covert options operations after the Horus Heresy, but still pretty much indicates them to be the violent one during it. You know, they actually had low numbers and had to start doing guerrilla warfare. Anyway, thank you very much for watching on this, my favourite correct con of 40k. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you all again soon. There, of course, is a link to Railing Games down below if you wish to save money on your Warhammer up to 20% and, you know, free delivery off to £20. There is also Forbidden Planet if you like comics, manga, anime, plushies, toys, all that other cool stuff. And there is my merchandise, comics, t-shirts, cups, and what everyone else is doing. I'm doing it too because I gotta make money. Patreon as well. I forgot that last time because I'm a dope. But to be honest with you, I'm probably getting rid of it. I'm not lying. I don't use it. So it just sort of like lingers there until when I <laughs> when on this day I back. I actually just put up a video, and I put the video up, and then I leave again and don't come back. So I don't even know what's really happening, I don't check it that often. And uh, that's it. Oh, yes. I'm, I, I say this every time, and I do mean it every time. If you're going to support this channel, please click on one of the other links. Do that, because that way you get something out of it. 
and you know you are supporting the channel as well and you know I'm not just grabbing your money but I'm debating whether or not to have a membership but I don't know what to give away for membership emojis are lame and a discord's free so uh, it's got to be something you know what do you suggest anyway thank you very much for watching have a great day